Imperial University in US. And I can read on and on. Let, let me do a little bit. Uh, University of Hawaii and Hilo. She also the Chancellor of and CEO of West Valley Mission Community School Dis a College District, and also a former dean and professor in College of Applied Science and Arts in San Jose State University. So I see that she has two hometowns in the U.S. And Rose Singh is an educator, administrator, and champion of entrepreneurial projects. Why I say that? Because in both California and Hawaii, she has established extensive partnership between the university and the business community to benefit the states and the Asia Pacific region. I can go on and on, then you probably will bore. So without further delay, let us welcome Rose Singh to give us her leadership and community. Great. We want to thank Aunt Sandy Chow for his uh, vision and his carry through all this forum. And the, basically, I think this is what exactly the society needs. What, as individual, how do we work with the community? How do the community benefit us and make the world a better place? So I can only share, um, Sandy says pretty much all, you know, the commitment, and I think we all agree. So thank for coming, maybe I can ask, how many people were born in the United States? Okay, so the rest are not, including me. How many were not born in the United States? Okay, so good. Anyway, that's just a, a background. First of all, you know, rather than going through the theory, I want to use my personal experience. And maybe I need two, three hands. Okay. Bring your dream to the mainstream. Basically, first, like uh, Sandy said, you have to be a member of the society. If you choose America as your home, you need to be a member. And you have to influence yourself as a leader. And then you carry out your dream. Because without participating, you cannot do that. And that's a kind of over, overall theme. And let me give you some key factor of success in a, you know, of course, there are many factors. I just want to make it very simple. One, two, three is easy to count. Optimistic, basically, you have to really feel, doesn't matter what happened. Even the society, sometimes the environment is a little hostile to you. When you first came, all these things I don't understand, people are not good to me, and all that. But be positive. There's nothing really wrong in this country that we together cannot fix. So optimistic and overcoming all difficulties, and then communicate. Again, everybody knows communicate, but communicate means listen to. Being Chinese American, we used to, we're told, don't talk, don't talk, and listen. And that's how we still need to learn that. Even though you want to talk, but you want to listen, and you want to communicate, and you want to build teams, and you want to collaborate with others. Then visionary, again, like Sandy mentioned, you have to have a vision mission or purpose in life. If you don't have that, you, you, know, you kind of will gradually learn you need that in order to proceed. Okay, so my experience, like uh, Andy, Andy, I get Andy mentioned, I was, uh, you can see I was born in China and went to Taiwan and Chen Kong University and Kansas State undergraduate degree and PhD master in Berkeley. So I'm like a local in certain ways. Then I started working as professor, chair, dean of San Jose State University, and I was chancellor for West Valley. So basically I used my experience 
to give you some, uh, share some, just some experience for you, so you can kind of learn or you can change. Build, uh, first, when you become a faculty, what do you do? You teach, right? But when I came from UC Berkeley after a year postdoc to San Jose State, I thought, oh, well, I want to teach. But after I joined the department, because my PhD is in nutrition, so I need to teach nutrition. San Jose State has nutrition. So I taught after maybe a half a semester, people say, our department is going to be canceled. I said, what? They said, well, we were under the home economic department. Anybody remember that home economic department? Jiajengxi. OK, because San Jose State has no nutrition department. They have home economic. That old days, that's very important, you know, child development and all that. And, but the department is going to be canceled because California never had good budget those days. So they said, well, the home economic is not needed, so we need to cancel the department. Here, I just started. And, uh, you know, what happened? I de decided that my students need nutrition. Nutrition is a good field and really help health. And, you know, I love to eat, too. <laughs> so, and from chemistry, I changed to nutrition. I said, this is such a good field. It helps help the world, help people. So I worked with students, started a new department. And here I was like 28 years old or whatever. I thought, well, even if they're going to cancel one department, if I have students, we'll go talk to the dean. The dean said, no, we're not going to add new department if we want to save money. But lo and behold, if you have a will, I have students and I work very hard to convince, communicate. Again, you have to be optimistic. And it's for survival, too. You know, not only for I need a job. <laughs> so I didn't really want to just cancel and go somewhere else. So then, OK, I built a department from nothing. That was pretty brave. And you know, you could do it. If you really need to do it, you can do it. Then the second thing I did, not, not of course, I taught many years and developed courses and work on master's degree, work on lots of things to get students, get support, getting money. Get. Then the next thing, they want me to be a dean of the entire college. Which they always have national search for deans. And for some reason, my department chair, there are 10 departments in my college. They all said, Rose, you can do it. Anyway, so I, I was dumb enough to say, OK, if you think I can do it, I'll try. So I applied. And I was surprised out of 50 national candidates, they chose me. And the president that time, Gail Fullerton, told me, you are the first one ever they use internal candidate." Most deans, most faculty don't like their own chairs or own, you know, they, they like outsiders. So I was the first chair and first dean from the local because I knew them. I know all the departments. The college is huge with journalism, ad advertising, all professional college with 6,000 students. Anyway, so the, those are just some examples. Uh, of course, being a university person, you cannot just work in the university. You need to work with collaboration with community. And start from the beginning, I believe. I like, I like community. I like work with people. So I serve on the you know, Rotary. I know some Rotary Act here. I served on San Jose Rotary for many years. I serve on American Leadership Forum, which is a leadership group in Silicon Valley. I think Sandy, St. Kong, and a, you know, a few others are. Once a year, they select maybe one Asian. So it's, I was the probably first Asian chosen. So we serve an international national task force. So it's basically, OK, the next thing, let me share some West Valley experience. Uh, this is, uh, how many people know what's West Valley? West Valley is here. Mission is in Santa Clara. Thank you. And they, they have one district. And you know, when I was in San Jose, they, they asked me to be their chancellor. Of course, people, uh, you know, being, being Asian, I was the first Asian in, as a chancellor there, too. Uh, when I w just walk in, they told me, oh, by the way, we have $5, bill $5 million deficit. I said, what? You recruited me. <laughs> Good thing I, I didn't move, because I live in Almaden Valley, and West Valley College is very close by. And I only took a leave from San Jose State, because 
So I, I, and I find out a five million dollar budget cut. You know, as a dean, in the whole college it was only 12 million. And this is five billion dollar budget cut. Uh, of course, you know, the, the, the West Valley Mission budget is about a, a hundred million and 12, you know, five is like five percent. And so I had to work on very hard to do that and think out of box. Because the chancellor, nobody will tell you what to do. And if you don't make the budget, then your college get accreditation, not approval, or all, you can't hire faculty, you can't add anything. So I was able to work with friends and community leaders I know. What do I do? So they, they t told me how to, what to do, and many of people say, work with a union, which is a w very good advice. Because the union know that we don't have enough budget. So they are willing to take some time off. They're willing to take our sabbatical leave. And the most important thing is that we have 100 acres in Mission College area. And that's empty land. So with some advice from my high-tech friends, they said, you could lease that land. I said, what? OK, you know, I was an educator. I got a PhD. I didn't know how to lease land. Anyway, but. I have to learn and hire a lawyer, hire a consultant, and work with my board. My board said, Ch you're a chancellor. You're in charge. We don't know. <laughs> so you know, when you are, some, some board member don't want to be responsible. So I got everything done. We got 40, mil 40 acres leased. And if you drive by 101 near Mission College, that, that area, all these are, belong, to Mission, belong to our district. And I get $4.5 million a year. For 50 years. So that, it was, actually, I was pretty proud. It's not myself, but I, I worked with a board and a consultant to get that done. AMC Theater and all that were our land. We lease, anyway, so those are the things. Uh, I think the rest, I, think, I, don't, I don't want to spend too much time. Okay, the next, the, the next big job I stayed pretty long is 12 years as a chancellor of the University of Hawaii Hilo. And I served, served three years as professor afterwards. So basically, I was there 15 years. Uh, so that one, OK, I, again, I went to there without knowing. They don't really had, hello? Yes. Uh, OK, they really don't have a good budget. And the college is, you know, I said, well, district West Valley Mission is too broad, traffic is too bad. And I in the Southern University of Hawaii Hilo need a chancellor. Somebody recommended me, and I went, and I know there are 200 people applied. And I didn't think I was going to go, go anyway. But at the end, they cho chose me, and I had to go. And you know, I told the, uh, the board that, give me three weeks. And after three weeks, I couldn't decide whether I want to go. They gave me another three weeks, and I finally decided to take the job. It was very interesting. Uh, what, so what we have to learn, I guess, whatever job, you have to think what you really want to do. And for the vision of a college or district, you have to think what do other people want to do. So I first did interview all kind of community leaders, chamber commerce, business leader, technology leader, students, faculty. What do you want? They said, we want a better college. We want to have international. They want, we want high tech. We want this, we want that. So I summarized and we had a vision, then improve the image, integrate culture, science, technology, and education. Hawaii is multicultural. It's even more multicultural than here. And they have indigenous language, indigenous Hawaiian native. And they are not, they are not uh, uneducated, but they are education style is slightly different. So I want to integrate culture, science, and I'm a scientist. So we work on that. That's the kind of vision part. Uh, so okay, 12 years, I don't think I need to talk about it. So I got a lot of things done, including got some new buildings. Uh, and the thing I'm a little bit more interested in to share with you is I built a center called Imiloa Astronomy Center. I have some flyer here. It's like a culture center. But it's astronomy and native Hawaiian culture. And in the world, I only visit uh, one place has, uh, um, New Zealand has a, has a center. So we, I thought, well, we should do that because 
the things that Native Hawaiians, they don't want their mountain to be taken by other uh, telescope. Astronomy is the best in Hawaii, in my university. Astro and you have to have a very expensive, big telescope in order to, which is a $1 billion kind of telescope. And, but the native Hawaiians don't like it. They, many of them say, you ruin our native, uh, sacred land and all. So in order to do that, I had to work with, collaborate with everyone, the scientists, the native people, and the faculty, saying, what do we do? You have to create jobs for the natives, too. You cannot have them doing janitor job only. They said, we don't want them, because we only can be janitors, and because we can't be scientists yet. I said, why not? So then we have to add a scientific program. So we built a center, which is very, now it's been, I, I'm proud to say, if you go to Hawaii, Big Island, they always want to show you that. It's a science museum, and actually I had the architect design that, which is like three basic mountain. And here's the inside the exhibit. We had a very good exhibit with all the things. And these are the exhibit. It really is very good. You know, that's actually, it's more fun than running college, hiring faculty and teach classes. Design something like that. But it's a lot of work. Uh, again, in order to get, okay, a lot of kids are there. In order to do these out of box things, you have to integrate because the, the goal was integrate culture and science, astronomy. Then the second thing is you have to communicate with your local community. And you want a world class. You don't want just any little thing. You want a world class, and you have to build trust among different constituents. Different constituents, including business leaders, Native Hawaiians, scientists, uh, they all don't want the same thing. So you have to say, I have... I, I'll, I was very lucky to get $28 million after work, work, work with the legislators. And Senator Inouye was kind of really helpful because he liked the vision. And he said, I will try to get, so I would, that time I would go to Washington almost every, every month to just gather from one million, eventually got 28 million. So we were able to view that and design and build world-class exhibit. Those are fun, I have some brochure if you're interested. So just to share, it's not bragging myself, it's just share. A person can have a dream with the community input and you could do things. So community leadership is not just for yourself, but you as a person can be the leader to gather everybody, to communicate with everybody, to work with everybody, and then eventually things will happen. Yeah, not everything will happen, but if you work together, collaborate, communicate, and have vision. Those are the still three things. And uh, this is, a, a, you know, I was a little happy when they showed me this. This is a magazine, higher education magazine. I don't want to brag, but the word community chancellors never been used. So they said I am, well, what did they say? I can't see it. So as a chancellor, I was a community chancellor and, and they said, I was able to ensure the local community shared with the university the advancement and success. So we add a lot of research projects, we add a lot of astronomy and community projects. So they, yeah, anyway, so this is a national magazine, higher education magazine, and they feature me in that. So I want to share community chancellors. So whatever you do, you can be community business leader, you could be a community engineer, you could be a community principal, you could be a community department head. But I, they told me I was community chancellor. I said, good, that's what I like to do in community. Anyway, so to summarize, I don't know the time, uh, to summarize, put a kind of quick thought. Uh, start, whatever you do, okay, if you like are your leadership group, you have to see internal, external need. Internal means your group. You know, like your friends, your whole board, what do you want to do? External means you know, community nearby, and people, you know, community can be defined from small to big to, you know, to, the, to the world, actually. And look for the need, and then look, I guess, sorry, it looks mixed one word. Leader, do not do the right thing, versus manager, do the things right. These are, you know, 
pretty much I, I taught leadership, so basically that's the theory, but it's not always true. But it's, you have to think the right thing. You don't just spend all your time for details. And you know, people tell you what to do. You have to see what I really should do, what I really need to do. Then you can be a leader. If you only do everything very correctly and you don't have any vision, you don't have any plan, you cannot work with people, then you cannot be a leader. Or you can try, you can try to improve. And the next thing I will say is passionate. I, I like to see how many people like what you do. Do you do? Okay, good, good, I'm glad. Yeah, that's, you can see people, if people don't like what they do, they're not happy. And you can see Sandy is very happy, Tony is very happy, and Chris, uh, Sandy is very happy. You know, when you're happy, you do things right. When you're not happy, you should change something else. Or think about how do you change your perspective to be happy. Because anyway, and then take a risk, work hard. And have fun, actually, I missed this. Have fun, I, this is my earlier version. Have fun is one thing. And the la last couple of things, be ambitious and confident in yourself. Trust yourself. Even though you're 15 or 20 or whatever, I was there once. I don't think that time I know to trust myself. We were just study, study, you know, pass the exam. But now you are very lucky. I think you, if you're good at something, you like something, just go for it. You don't have to say, you know, engineer makes $20,000 more than teacher or whatever. Think about what you really like to do. And you can succeed in America, whatever you do. And then the, I think the most important thing to be a leader or to be a citizen or to be a community member is humble and, tr and, and honest. Humble. You know, it's, it's, you know, Chinese, of course, say you have to be humble, humble. Humble is from the heart. It's not necessarily you just bow to people. You think, you know, you're not better than people, but you're work, willing to work with people. That's the kind of, so just to share with you, and then aloha, that means thank you, caring, and I love you. That's how aloha, too. Thank you.